let's get right into it. Are the stock brakes bad? No, just need better fluid and pads. But are the Brembo brakes better looking? Of course they are. And although I wasn't planning on changing them until 2023, I had a track day in December, so I wanted to make sure the brakes are fresh. Now, you can either buy the Brembo upgrade kit as a whole for about $900, or you can find used calipers on eBay, or you can do what I did and buy all the parts individually from Ford OEM retail websites, which is selling new parts at huge discount, which means that I paid a little over $600 for the whole kit instead of $900. One thing to keep in mind is that the assembly picture can be confusing, and in reality, the caliper comes with all the hardware, so you don't have to purchase it separately, like I did. When I had all the parts ready, I started the prep work. Since the calipers were brand new, I only cleaned them of dust and wiped them with alcohol pads to clean any grease off. I also marked the factory position of the top bolt so I can assemble them the same way after. Next thing was to tape out all of the areas that won't be painted. Right, it took me some time but I finally finished covering all the areas that are not supposed to be painted. So, I think it came out nicely, uh, but it's, it's a pain in the butt. I was ready to start the painting process. I spent a lot of time deciding what colors to go with. I was debating between yellow and red because I wanted it to look factory, but ended up going with yellow because it contrasts well with the blue. I chose the VHT high temperature caliper paint. It had plenty of good reviews, so I decided to try it out. Alright, first coat is ready. As per instructions, I apply three coats of paint with a one hour dry interval. I then apply the Brembo decal and top everything off with a layer of clear coat. I left it to dry for 24 hours and then removed all the masking tape that I applied earlier. According to instructions, it was time to bake the calipers in oven for an hour at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, be cautious. I used the only oven I have in my house, which is the same oven I use for cooking, and my wife was not too happy about it. Make sure to have windows and doors open to vent the air in house. There is a noticeable smell created by the paint, even if I let them dry for 24 hours before baking them. The good news is that the smell was not absorbed by the oven itself, so the food was fine afterwards. I was done with the front caliper, so I moved to the rear ones. Removing the caliper was fairly easy. I forgot how nice it is to work on newer cars and not deal with rusty old bolts. Alright, finally I taped everything off. Uh, I just need to put the trash bags around so I'm not spraying anything that's not supposed to be painted and we should be good. Here are the small pieces, I cleaned them as much as I could. Now the painting of the rear calipers was tricky. The temperatures outside were going down, so I was painting at temperatures of 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the minimum required, and as a result the paint cracked in a few places, so I had to repaint it, but this time I used a heater to dry and cure the paint quicker and provide optimal temperature as per instructions. So weather is not in my favor, so I'm using a heater to bring the temperatures up as much as I can and make the adhesion of the paint as good as I can get it to. We'll see how much is gonna help it. It's time to put everything back on and what I want to show you is actually the reason why I'm changing the rear discs as well because thickness wise, I don't know if you can see that, they're still in pretty good shape that there's a lot of life left in them. But for some reason you can see the uh, this area is kind of grooved so it's not flat and uh, like like the other side you see so I'm not sure if that's warping or brake pad so yeah that's the main reason I'm I'm changing them also the brake pad itself for some reason the front one is deteriorating much much faster so you can see there's still life in them but they have different thicknesses so I'm not sure why is that happening let me know in the comments if that's something normal to expect or uh, something is not right anyway here's the new one uh, you can compare it thickness wise they're both still pretty thick yeah, I'll see, maybe I'll keep those and 
uh, just buy a different pair of pads at some point. And here are the new pads as well. I'm going to check the thickness. Here's the proper pair, and they both have the same thickness, as you can see. All right, it's time to put everything back. When putting everything back on, I forget that I need to compress the brake cylinder so I can install it back on. I'm gonna show you something, and looks like that could work. So. actually rotating by itself right now because of the rubber so I don't even have to apply to use the pliers okay to put the hardware back on and we should be good It was time to remove the old front calipers and rotors. Also, as noted by many other owners, stock dust shield is not working with the bigger calipers, so I use a cutoff saw to make clearance. Okay, so I made up some space for the calipers, so they sit nicely, uh, there's enough space for them. You can see more up top and a little bit less at the bottom, but still fine. Uh, you can see the oil paint passing through and uh, a little bit here. So far it came out nicely, although you can see the underspray here. Uh, but so far, looks pretty good, so, uh, gotta finish the installation. One thing I couldn't figure out on internet is whether or not I need new brake lines. I already had braided stainless steel lines from StopTech, and I was hoping I can reuse them with the Brembo calipers, but it wasn't the case. Okay, so the reason your stock brake lines are not gonna work with the RS, uh, calipers is because of the housing. The stock one is much more narrow compared to the RS one, so they're just not going to fit. So it's not only because of the design of the uh, housing, it's also the size. Now it was time to put everything back on, and I kept the same bolts from old caliper, except I used new thread lock. The last thing on the list was the bleeding of the brakes, which was also something I never did before. Alright, so I just finished bleeding the brakes. Uh, just for the record, that was the first time I'm, I was doing it, so it took me longer time than I expected. One thing to note is that uh, although it is recommended to start with the rear brakes uh, and then move up, because these were new calipers and had no brake fluid in it, uh, I could not properly bleed the rear ones, so I had to come back to the front ones uh, bleed them first then go back to the rear ones come back to the front ones to check that they're all uh, in good shape and there's no bubbles so uh, yeah and this is basically means that the installation is complete you can already see the uh, three millimeter spacer in the front uh, to fit the stock ST wheels and there's some paint chipping already because I wasn't too careful with it 
few more words about spacers. I don't like running spacers and only use them to create enough clearance between rim and caliper. Brembo is regarding minimum 3mm all around the caliper and the 3mm spacer I got from Amazon is providing just that. I've also done a track day as I mentioned earlier and had no issues whatsoever. The only problem I encountered is with my winter wheels which you see in the thumbnail. They barely fit with a 3mm spacer so I initially tried a 50mm spacer to stay on the safer side but despite the wheels having the openings for spacers use I still couldn't fit them because those openings are smaller than the ones on snowflakes. As a result I ended up buying 5mm spacers of the same brand as a 3mm and it worked just fine. Thanks for watching.